Today we're starting 4.2 mean value theorem. Let f be continuous on the interval a to b and differentiable on the point a b. There is a number c in the a b such that f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a equals b minus a. If I have point, I'm just making this graph up. It's not perfect. This would be your A, F of A. This would be your B, F of B. If I took and connected these two, this would be my slope. I need the slope, and that's what this is right here. That tells me the slope between those two points. When I'm saying at point C, I'm just picking a point C here, anywhere on that line. If I take and make the slope, what should the slopes be? If it's tangent at that point. These two slopes should be parallel. That's why they're equal. Because it's tangent at that point. It looks a lot harder than it actually is. Huh? I'm just showing you what it means graphically. Okay? You don't have to graph these. No. We're, we're going to get to them, just not for a while yet. Okay? We're going to let f of x equals 1 half x to the fourth plus 3x. We're going to find the number c in 0, 4, such that f prime of c equals 4 minus 0, or sorry, f of 4 minus f of 0 equals 4 minus 0. First thing we're going to do is just solve this by putting in 4 into the, the equation. So I really have, I'll just put in the numbers, 1 half 4 to the 4th plus 3 times 4 minus 1 half 0 to the 4th plus 3 times 0 all over 4 minus 0. Four to the fourth. Two fifty six, cut that in half. So that's one twenty eight right here. And three times four is twelve, so whoops. I don't know why I used the calculator. So I have 140 minus, over here it's going to be nothing, over 4 minus 0, which is 4. So I have 140 divided by 4. And I get 35. Who's it's close. So I have to find a number in C. Now 
Actually, I would. We have to find the C in 0, 4. That we know that F prime of C is 35. Take the derivative of f of x. Was it 1 half x to the fourth plus 3x? What's the derivative? What is it? 2x plus 3. So we know that 2x plus 3 has to equal 35. So I have 35 equals 2x plus 3. Now solve for x. Let's see if I subtract the 3, I get 32. Divide by 2, x is 16. So that the c has to be this actually means C. What's wrong? Yeah, who forgot to tell me the third? I wasn't paying attention at first. All right. And I'm going to change just so we don't lose track of variables to C, because that's what we're trying to find is a C. All right, subtract, I get 16 equals C cubed. Don't even do that. What do I need to do to get rid of the cube, cube root? So the cube root of 16 is what C is. That's it. But you have to remember to go through the steps. Don't cut out little things. Remember, goes through. Try this one. All right, when I put in the 2, I have the square root of 2 plus 3 is 5 minus the square root of, if I put in 0, 0 plus 3 is 3, 2 minus 0 is 2. You can't take the square root of 3 minus the square root of 2 and get square root of, or sorry, square root of 5 minus square root of 3 and get square root of 2. I'm going to find the approximation. Square root of 5 minus square root of 3. I get 0. 0.504. Divide by 2. This is about 0 0.252. Just to show you, the square root of 2 is 1.41. Divided by 2, it's nowhere near. You have to be careful there. So that tells me that f prime of c is 0 0.252. So I have to find the number c in 0, 2. So I take and find f prime of x. Now I'm just going to rewrite it to make it easier. A lot of you don't like the square root. You write x plus 3 to the 1 half. This is a chain rule. a is x plus 3. b is x to the half. The derivative of a is just 1. The derivative of b, 1 half out front, whatever a is, subtract 1. And I can rewrite this so it's subtract 1 from the 1 half. So it's negative 1 half. 
1 over 2 square root of x plus 3. Multiply by 1, it's the same thing. So f prime is 1 over 2 square root of x plus 3. UK up to now. F prime. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to set, set this equal to this. So I have 0 0.252 equals 1 over 2 square root of C plus 3. I went from F of X to F of C. What's my first problem? I, what can I do to make this problem a little bit easier right off the bat? Flip it. 1 over 0 0.252 equals 2 square root of C plus 3. I just flipped it to get the variable on the top. So I have 1 divided by 0.252. That's what it is. I'm just going to leave it up. I can say 3.968. Next step. So I have 3.968 divided by 2. 1.984 is what the square root of C plus 3 is. How do I get rid of a square root? I square them. And I get 3.936. Okay. Now I need to subtract the 3. C is 0 0.936. And that's your answer. It's following through. Every single one is going to be set up similar to this. The part that's probably going to mess you up is if you have that radical like up here. Let's try this one. A word problem. Brandon enters the PA Turnpike at the Cranberry Toll Station. The ticket at the toll has 11 a.m. stamped. 125 miles later, Brandon exits the PA Turnpike at 12.30. A few moments later, a police officer gives him a ticket for speeding on the Turnpike, which has a speed limit of 65. How is this so? The cop was not following him. The cop was just sitting at the exit. And the first thing he paid his ticket, he pulled him over. All right, for this problem, there's no equation here. So all I'm going to say is f of t is going to talk about the distance traveled. OK? Use the same exact function. F prime of C equals F of A minus F of B all over A minus B. How many miles did Brandon travel? He traveled 125 miles. He started at zero. What was the time difference? An hour and a half, so 1.5 minus zero. So 
I really have 125 divided by 1.5. So Brandon was going 83.3 miles per hour, which if the speed limit was 65, he was speeding. And that's how they figure it out. Yeah. They take your distance and your time, divide it. It's the average. Yeah, you could be going you could be going 35 miles for a little bit, but then that means You've got to be, for one part, going 100 and some miles to make it up. Your average is 83 miles per hour. You had to have been speeding on the turnpike. No way around it. Yeah, if you're speeding, you've got to take a pit stop so you know and figure it out. That's it for this lesson.